In this video, we will be looking at how to navigate and edit the quick menu. The quick menu is what our cashiers will be working with at our point of sale terminal. We will be editing the layouts and the actual buttons within them for our cashiers to press. When we open our quick menu tab, you will see three areas. To the left, we have our global menu items list. In the middle, we have our actual quick menu. And to the right, we have our menu set titles. When you touch on an existing menu set title, it will highlight in blue and load its corresponding quick menu. The quick menu consists of seven tabs along the top and seven tabs along the bottom. This is a fixed amount of tabs and cannot be increased or reduced. Remember, each tab works differently from one another and can be set up with a different number of rows and columns. To begin, let's give our first quick menu a screen name. I'm going to call this Snacks. The way we name our tab Snacks is how our cashier will know which quick menu to pick when they're processing a snack transaction. In our screen, we can see our rows are set to seven and our columns are set to seven. Creating a seven by seven grid. We can change this at any time by using their respective drop-down menus. Remember, the number of rows and columns that you have affect the size of the buttons for the cashier to press, as well as the text that appears on the button itself. When working with the quick menu, it is recommended to give yourself a lot of space to work with before finalizing your rows and columns. Let's now add a menu item to our quick menu. We're going to add some items to our snacks screen. To do so, simply click and drag from the global menu items list and drop onto a quick menu button you want it assigned to. Once added, you will see the menu item appear along with the default price. Let's go ahead and add a few more items. Now we can make changes to the appearance of these quick buttons. To change the color, simply select the menu button and use the color dropdown to select a color, like so. It is recommended to use light pastel-like colors so that the buttons are clear and easy to read for the cashier, as the text on the button will always appear in a black font color. To highlight and select multiple menu buttons at once, simply click and drag your mouse over the menu buttons. You can do this in straight lines like this, or even in unique patterns like this. This way we can set the color of multiple menu buttons at once. We can also press right click to cut a menu button and paste it in a different spot. We can copy several menu buttons and paste it too. We can also copy and paste items into a different tab. This is useful for when you want to duplicate frequently purchased items like drinks onto multiple screens. To remove a quick menu button, simply press right click and select remove. Removing buttons from your quick menu does not delete items. The menu items will remain in your global menu items list for the next time you need them. If there's ever a need to go back to the menu item details from our quick menu, we can also right click on a quick menu button to find the item. The system will automatically expand the division, the group and category of the menu item and point us on top of it. Let me clean up this screen a little bit.
If you are pricing menu items directly, those prices will appear on the quick menu buttons. If you're using price levels to set pricing based on your individual location or who the pricing would affect, like an employee price level, for example, then you can use the price levels dropdown menu over here to show the correct prices on your quick menu buttons according to the appropriate price level that you select. The next thing we're going to learn about is how to inherit a quick menu screen from an existing menu set. This is very useful as it allows you to build a single menu screen once and use it as many times as needed, whether it be in a different menu screen tab within the same menu set space or within a different menu set altogether. When working with menu inheritance, it is recommended to create a menu set titled Inheritable Menu for clarity purposes. This way we know where all our inheritable menu screens live and can make adjustments to them as required. We've gone ahead and created a menu set title called Inheritable Menu. Currently, it has two menu screens set up, the weekly menu screen and the snacks menu screen. To allow other menu screens to inherit from this one, I must mark the weekly menu screens as inheritable. To do this, I will check off the box that says Inheritable next to the color dropdown. Let's now step into a different menu set to inherit our weekly menu screen. In our first tab, we're going to inherit from our previously created weekly menu by touching on the Inherits dropdown and selecting Inherit menu weekly. And there you have it. I've inherited my weekly menu screen from inheritable menu into menu set one in its own tab. Any changes made to the original inheritable menu titled weekly will be reflected in any menu screen that inherits from it. When a menu screen inherits from an inheritable menu, it can be different from the original. For example, I want to add more items into my inherited menu screen in this menu set. I can do that simply by dragging and dropping what I need onto this menu screen. Changes in an inherited menu screen do not make changes to the original inheritable menu it was built from. If an inherited menu screen differs from its inheritable menu screen in certain areas, you will see a blue backwards facing arrow on the quick menu button. Let's say for example, I remove the French onion soup. I now have a blue backwards facing arrow. If I right click, I can select revert to inherited and my French onion soup is back. I can also do that for any of the items that I added. Right click, revert to inherited and that space becomes blank because in the inheritable menu, there are no items in the last row. And that's how menu inheritance works. Thank you for watching.